You're listening to BYU Football on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Second quarter coming up here in Lynchburg, Virginia. BYU 14, Liberty 3. BYU football brought to you in part by All Pro Capital. Put your money to work with smart real estate investments. Visit allprocapital.com for more information. All Pro Capital, a proud sponsor of BYU Athletics. First quarter stats see BYU outgained by Liberty 128 to 116. But BYU outgaining Liberty on the scoreboard 14 to three. Among the first quarter highlights, first career INT for BYU safety Talon Alfrey set up a short BYU touchdown drive. A 27-yard touchdown drive. BYU's 76-yard touchdown drive ended in a 46-yard pass from Jaron Hall to Puka Nakua for Puka, his longest reception of the season. Good catch and run. Most of those yards were Puka's after the catch. BYU 14 and Liberty 3. It's uh, Lynchburg and uh, the words Lynchburg and Ladybug aren't too far apart. And that's we, we, we've seen an infestation here in the booth. Ladybugs everywhere. I've been making a few calls, swatting bugs away from my mouth area here in the opening 15 minutes of play. As we come back in, the second quarter of play gets underway with Liberty facing a third down and seven at the BYU 36-yard line. Is this four-down territory for the Flames? They don't have a good leg in Nick Brown from this distance. So it could be that it's four down territory, needing two downs to get seven yards. Perhaps a punt and pin is in the offing. It's a four down lineup set up for BYU defensively. Sprint to the right and a throw complete for a first down. Making a U-turn and staying alive to the 20-15-13 yard line is Demario Douglas. He's fun to watch. Not fun for the Cougar defenders to watch, but a conversion made by the Flames on third down and seven. A throw to the right to Douglas. He makes the man miss, does a quick little turnaround, and gets inside the 15 to the 12-yard line. So Liberty driving down to the 12, first down and 10. Jonathan Bennett, shotgun, Shedro Lewis to his left hip. Lewis and Day-Day Hunter, the primary backs for the Flames. Twins left and twins right. The short side is the right side for Bennett. He looks to the right, now looks middle, steps up and takes off. 15, 10, 5, slide, takes a hit by Keenan Peely as he's going down. No flag, and they'll say the slide began. There oh. comes a flag, it comes late. The slide began at the 6. This may be a half the distance first and goal situation here for Liberty. Boy, that was really, really close. I guess if you're going to be strict, that absolutely no contact can be made with a sliding player. But he slid right as he was getting to Keenan. And it, um, it, it looks simultaneous, simultaneous, the start of the slide and the tackle from Keenan Peely. Nothing. I didn't see any contact to the head or neck. It was a clean hit by Keenan. Again, it was just a bang, bang, slide tackle. Long conversation. Here's the call. After the slide, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, late hit on the defense. Half the distance of the goal, automatic first down. So Liberty in position to make it a one-score game. It'll be first and goal from the three-yard line. BYU 14, Liberty 3 here in Lynchburg. Well, Liberty struggled to beat an FCS team last week, Gardner-Webb. Liberty has more, had more first downs in the first quarter today than they had after three quarters last week against Gardner-Webb. Thanks to my stats intern, Paul Morrison, for that tidbit. All right, BYU an 11-point lead. Will it stay 11 here in the opening minutes of the second quarter? Bennett takes the shotgun snap, hands off to Shedro Lewis, and Lewis goes up the middle for the touchdown. A three-yard run on first and goal from the three. And Liberty makes it 14 to 9 with the PAT pending. Flames get within one score here in Lynchburg. It's, you know, pretty amazing they were able to overcome such obvious misses in the pass game. The play that set up the touchdown, uh, Bennett rolls out against his arm and delivers a strike on an out. And, and after the catch and run, sets him up inside the 10. And then a couple of elementary run plays got him across the end zone. But this Liberty team is resilient. And just because BYU got up 14-3 doesn't mean they were about to quit. Still a lot of game left. Nick Brown swings the right leg. The PAT is up and good, 14-10. So the two Liberty scoring drives have been 11 plays, 84 yards, and 11 plays, 75 yards. That last drive, 11 for 75, 342 off the clock, and a touchdown scored by Shedro Lewis makes the score 14-10 on the PAT. Cougs lead down to four. The offense gets the ball back next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. 
Now back to Riley Nelson and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. All right, so back here in Lynchburg, Virginia, on a gorgeous late Saturday afternoon for BYU football at Liberty University. BYU 14, Liberty 10. Already 275-plus yards of offense between these two teams. Liberty 161 to BYU's 116. Liberty outpassing BYU 18 to 96, 108 to 96, outrushing BYU 53 to 20. Liberty already nine first downs to BYU's four. And Liberty almost doubling up BYU in plays run right now at 23 to 11, but it's BYU with the lead of four points, a short field touchdown helping the Cougs after an INT thrown by Jonathan Bennett. Bennett nine for 12 for a buck 08. No touchdowns and a pick, pass efficiency rating 133.9. BYU's Jaron Hall. 5 for 7 for 96 and 2 scores, no picks. Pass efficiency rating 280.9. Jason Stricker kicks off from north to south, right to left as we see it. And you hear it. And again, a side spinning squibber into and through the end zone. Touchback, BYU first and 10 at the Cougar 25-yard line. Puka Nakua leading rusher for BYU right now. Two carries, 16 yards. Puka Nakua leading receiver for BYU. Two receptions, 54, and a score, including a 46-yard touchdown reception. Good to see Miles Davis back out there in the yep. backfield. Inch, uh, I was just thinking with only four rush attempts, granted they've only run 11 plays, but see if BYU comes out and tries to use the ground game as a way to both be productive and move the ball, but also let the defense rest on the sideline a little bit. Two wides left, single wide, and a tight end to the right. Davis will split out to the right as... The wheel route's thrown to Miles, and it's thrown incomplete, and Miles went out of bounds as the hat flew down the near sideline. So it'll be second down and 10 for BYU. Incomplete Hall to Davis down the near sideline, the right sideline from Hall's vantage point. Chase Roberts, Braden Cosper, Cody Epps, Puka Nakua, wide receivers in the set. Now they're going to take out Roberts and Cosper and tighten things up. Double tight to the right with Epps and Nakua now left. Lone setback is Davis. He'll go down the near far sideline for Nakua. And does he make the catch? Puka does near midfield. It's a 25-yard gain on second down and 10. Jaron Hall throws it up for Puka Nakua. Puka runs under it at the 50. They'll give him the 49-yard line, 24-yard gain, first and 10 for BYU. You don't see that very often, Greg, in today's college football. An under center snap, a traditional three-step drop and a throw. The drop back passing game from under center has almost gone extinct, but good to see uh, Coach Roderick bring it back with a productive little wrinkle. Nakua motions to the backfield to create power pistol left. Katoa and Nakua with Hall. Play fake. And Jaron throws to Puka in the left flat. Puka makes the catch and is thrown out of bounds immediately for no gain. It'll be second down and 10 from the BYU 49-yard line. They tried to do a play-action shot there down the field, but the Liberty's safeties did a good job sorting out the deep crossing route between Keanu Hill and Cody Epps, leaving nothing but the check down for Jaron. So second and 10. Rex and Epps will check out. Cosper and Roberts will check in. Ethan Erickson and Keanu Hill Split to the left, the short side, left side for Jaron Hall. And then two wides, as mentioned, Cosper and Roberts to the right. Katoa off of Hall's left hip. Shotgun for Jaron. Receives the chest high snap. Little play fake look. Now pressured to the right. Throws on the run and throws it out of bounds. A throwaway creating third down and 10 from the BYU 49-yard line. So good heat there, putting Jaron on the run to the right. They ran a great stunt where they took both tackles and they slanted them to the right, and then they had the end. Rather than just doing a, a tackle end stunt, the, the tackle came all the way around both, sorry, the end came all the way around both tackles to the opposite A gap. Uh, very difficult stunt to so sort out, which the offensive line was unable to do. Rex and Katoa and Nakua all left. Cosper and Roberts to the right, so it's empty. Now they bring Nakua into pistol. The play clock down to four. On a third down and 10, a handoff to Puka going left, and he's wrapped up, brought down maybe three yards the gain. But I won't be surprised if the offense stays on the field. We'll see what they do. They'll say punt instead. So it'll be punt and pin from the 47 of Liberty. 
So a gain of four, fourth and six. But they will not go for it here. They'll bring Ryan Rico out. I think Puka Nakua was complaining of a face mask on that tackle on the far sideline. Didn't get the call. And Rico's out to punt away for the second time today. So Liberty will get the ball with a chance to take a lead. First punt from Rico, 55-yard bomb. This time he's trying to punt and pin. The line of scrimmage is the Liberty 48-yard line. Rico awaits the long snap. Austin Riggs back in at long snapper. As Rico knuckles it to the far sideline and not a great kick. It went out of bounds a good 10 yards out. Where will they spot it going out? Mm. Up to the 20. They're going to keep coming. So 20-yard line. So that'll be a 28-yard gain on the punt. And first down and 10 for the Flames from their 20 after this. We'll take a break. It is BYU 14, the Flames of Liberty 10, 12.03 to go till halftime. Timeout on the field and timeout in the booth for our listening audience on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to BYU Football on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's Jason Shepard with a scoreboard update couple of top 25 scores to update you on. Ole Miss leading at LSU 17-9. Oregon hosting UCLA. Ducks up 17-10. And Texas leading at Oklahoma State 14-10 in the first quarter. Back to Lynchburg, Virginia. And the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Thank you, Jason. BYU football brought to you in part by Bam Bam's Barbecue, bringing you authentic Central Texas barbecue. Try their tender brisket or mouth-watering pulled pork or my favorite, the jalapeno cheddar sausage. Bam Bam's Barbecue, located just north of BYU's campus. Bam Bam's Barbecue, a proud sponsor of BYU Athletics. BYU 14, Liberty 10, our score. First play of the uh, first play of the Liberty Drive, forthcoming with 12.03 to go till halftime. The Flames are working from the shadows. As the sun sets to the west, the far side loge area and suite area, creating shadow that creeps from Far side to near side in the late afternoon. Shotgun snap to Bennett. Gives to Day-Day Hunter. Day-Day busts a run to the outside. A good run on first and 10. It was nearly 7, 8 yards on first and 10 for Day-Day Hunter. Averaging around 6 yards a pop right now. It'll be a second down and short for the Flames on a nice run to the right. This Liberty team is very resilient. They've been... uh, they're, they've not been involved in all sorts of blowouts. They've been able to, you know, be in these kind of close games. So they don't seem to be phased by the fact that BYU got two quick scores. Second and three. A motion to Twins right for Jonathan Bennett on a 12-second play clock and 11:32 game clock here in the first half. 14-10. Cougs up four. Again, shotgun. And again, handoff. And again, Day-Day. And Day-Day moves the sticks again. Second and three. Give him six. And it's around six yards every time he touches it right now. Yeah, and he's doing it a bunch of different ways. That time he stuck it up in the hole and he stayed he stayed with it. A couple other times he's been able to bounce it and use his speed to the outside. He's been able to uh, give this defense. This defense hasn't quite solved the puzzle of Day-Day today. Today Day. There you go. <laughs> 11.05 to play till halftime. Cougs up four. Jonathan Bennett on a 9-for-12 passing day. day. Has Hunter to his right hip. Wing back to the right. Two wides to the left. Quarterback draw, and Tyler Batty wraps up and throws down for no gain, maybe even a loss on the play. And it'll be second down, maybe 11 here for Liberty with 10.40 to play till the break. Flames going right to left as we see it, and you hear it here in quarter number two. BYU's being, being outgained right now by 30 yards on the stat sheet, but outgaining Liberty by four on the big board. Caden Haas and Lorenzo Fawatea check out defensively as BYU platoons up front. Checking in Hunter Greer. Out to Nice Amahe. Batty and Nelson are the ends on this second down. They say 10. No gain on the last play. A check down to Day Day on the right side, and Day Day sidestepping and shuffling past the 40-yard line to the 43, nearly a first down gain on second down and 10. He got very close to the line to gain. It may be third and inches here now for Liberty, and they go quickly to the line. Tempo and shotgun for Bennett. A handoff middle, and Day-Day's got the first down. On third down and one, they hand off to Hunter. And to the 44-yard line, Liberty moves the sticks again. 
BYU defense has done good on first down. I, there's been a number of second and longs. Uh, a couple of them have been caused by the BYU defense stopping. A couple others have been penalties uh, against this Liberty offense, but they do not seem phased as they've uh, been very productive in second and long. In that case, almost picking up the first down, setting up you know a third and inches. So BYU's doing great on first. Need to do a little bit better on second down defensively. From the Liberty 45, a shotgun snap and a five-step drop for Jonathan Bennett. Pressure from from his right, a little shovel to the tight end, Jerome Jackson, and Jackson gets past midfield to the 47 of BYU. It's a gain of eight, third down and two coming up for the Flames. Batty showing a good motor on that play as he gets subbed out. Uh, one of the things that I think uh, another difference we've been very consistent with four defensive linemen the other thing is we have not seen as much platooning they are subbing out you know two maybe three at a time but you don't see it nearly as frequently as we've seen it in games previous twins left and right Shedro Lewis now checks in and vacates to create empty for Bennett play clock at 10 game clock at 835 here in the second quarter BYU 14 Liberty 10 flames driving into BYU territory they're going to motion tightly in on the left Bennett throws underneath. It's complete to Trayon Sibley to the 34-yard line of BYU. Uh, it's another first down gain. Gain of 13 to the 34. Pepe Tanovasa, the tackle for the Cougs, as Liberty's over 200 yards of offense here in the first half of play to BYU's 144. The Cougs have the four-point lead, 14 to 10. In spite of Bennett's 51% completion percentage on the season, that last throw and the various throws that he's missed today, including the interception, that last throw put him 12 for 15 for 80 percent completion on the day the reason why I mention it is because that last one he almost dirted he had a wide open receiver across the middle he caught it at his ankle he caught it on top of his shoelaces but uh, he's finding a way to get completions quads to the right single wide receiver left empty for Bennett he'll throw to the one wide receiver side it's complete to Noah Frith on a first and 10 from the 34 gets to the 29 so a gain of five second and five for the flames the flames are now in scoring territory trailing it by four 735 to play until halftime we are halfway through quarter number two BYU 14 and Liberty 10 here in Lynchburg as the shadows lengthen in the late afternoon a gorgeous afternoon 70 degrees at kickoff not a cloud in the sky just a hint of a breeze couldn't be any better in mid to late October in Bennett is shotgun BYU shows four on the line Hand off to Shedro. Shedro mincing steps forward to the 25. He gained four, third down and one. So it's third down, long one here for the Flames. Big down for BYU defensively to force Liberty into a decision. Just Eating like just a yard to go, just outside the 25-yard line, Riley. I was just going to say their first drive was uh, BYU came up with a big stop, except that time it was on, in a goal line situation to stop them for three. This same one, it's a, a third down situation. Ibacks for the first time today. The tight end, Bollinger, the fullback, will lead for Day-Day. Day-Day's got the first down. Day-Day's got the secondary. Day-Day inside the 15, keeps the legs turning. Oh, he's still running. What a run. Inside the 10 to the 9-yard line, a 17-yard run. That is not a big man carrying a lot of people down the field. 5-10, a buck 90 for Day-Day Hunter, and they go quickly to the line on first and goal. Ibex again. Day-Day again. Day-Day bouncing off a blocker, gets to the 7, the 6-yard line. Riley, that was a remarkable run. And they say 190. I don't know. Maybe Mitch, who's down field level, can tell me. But that guy doesn't look very much more than maybe 175 pounds. I think they're being generous with his weight. But what he might lack in uh, pounds on the scale, he makes up for in pounds and heart. And just as I had said a couple of plays earlier that BYU has been limiting the substitutions, we do see our first hockey line change of the game with it looked like eight in, eight, eight in, out. Eight in, eight out. You got it. Eight in, eight out. It's second down. And goal from the six. Strength to the right with a tight end, a wing back, and two wides. Day Day Hunter off the right hip of Bennett. The handoff to Day Day. Day Day gets the five yard line, and that's about it. Wow, Liberty's having trouble when they get to the goal to go situations. And now it's third and goal from the five. Oh, Liberty will feel like a huge opportunity has gone by the wayside twice. If they cannot get in for six, they had to earlier kick a touchdown or kick a field goal, failing to get in for a touchdown after an 84-yard drive. And after another long drive, they're sitting at third and goal from the five. But a touchdown to take a lead here is a possibility. Trips left, single wide right. Shedro Lewis off the right hip of Bennett. Shotgun snap, three-step drop. Sets gets ready to fire, doesn't see what he likes. Moving to his left, throws to an open back corner of the end zone. The catch is made for a touchdown. 
by the tight end, Austin Henderson, and Liberty takes the lead, and that was a nice throw under duress from Jonathan Bennett. And some nice work by the tall tight end in the back left corner of the end zone to get a foot down and record the score. Jerome Jackson at 6'3", 250, I make it Austin Henderson at 6'4", 235, elevates and brings it in for six. And Liberty goes up 16 to 14 with the PAT pending. Good initial protection and then really good pocket movement by Bennett. I think snap to throw, that was probably five, maybe five plus seconds. And whenever you've got that, it's hard to cover for that long. In this case, Henderson gets lost in the back corner of the end zone and Bennett was able to keep eyes on him and put it up there above Udo's reach for the score. BYU's 14-3 first quarter lead is gone. It's 16-14 with the PAT pending. The swing of the right leg by Nick Brown is good for the PAT. 17-14 Flames after an 80-yard 13-play, 6-minute, 57-second drive. So the three scoring drives for Liberty today, Riley, it's more of the same. 11 plays, 84. 11 plays, 75. 13 plays, 80. Long, time-consuming, yard-churning drives. Two of those drives between six and seven minutes. We're taking a timeout. 5.06 to go till halftime. Liberty 17, BYU 14 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Let's head back to the Built Bar broadcast booth and join the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Hey, Cougar fans, get more savings and more benefits with Boost by Smith's Rewards Membership. You'll enjoy free delivery and two fuel points for every dollar you spend on groceries and lots more. Membership starts at just $59, so sign up today at smithsfoodanddrug.com slash boost. Well, Liberty can feel really good about the lead, 17-14, to 14, but also good about this. Liberty's outgaining BYU by 100 yards. Liberty has 13 first downs to BYU's five. Liberty is plus 10 minutes in possession time. Liberty has run 20 more plays than BYU 36-16. 17-14 Flames lead the Cougs. But for Liberty's one two-play INT drive, they've gone up and down the field on BYU. The kickoff by Jason Stricker after the touchdown to Austin Henderson. Will go into and through the end zone. Touchback for the Cougs. First and 10 from the BYU 25. Well, different set of circumstances, Riley, but the Cougs find themselves in another shootout. And another shootout where the defense can't seem to get off the field and the offense... It doesn't stay on the field as long as you'd like. As long as the offense is, is scoring points, then time of possession doesn't matter as much and number of plays run doesn't matter as much. This, to me, feels not as much like Arkansas, although uh, but it almost feels more like the Wyoming-Utah State where the first half was a little bit too close for comfort, but over 60 minutes, BYU was able to win out. Here's hoping it can follow the same model, but the offense needs to answer this last Liberty touchdown. Jaron Hall, shotgun. Quick drop. Fires to, uh, goes to his right, goes down under duress. A sack of Jaron Hall back at the 17-yard line as he was pressured to his right, came back toward the middle behind the line of scrimmage and goes down Tyron Dupree among the Flames in for the tackle. And it'll be second down and 18. Maybe 17. No, they waiting for them to put the ball down. Yeah, second and 17 back at the 18-yard line. So second and 17 Cougs with 4.35 to go till halftime. If Liberty can get the ball back here, they will look to own the middle eight as the Flames will get the ball to start half number two. Second and 17, Cougs. Jaron Hall back to the gun. Chris Brooks to his left hip. Two receiving options left and right. Ball far hash. The Cougs go left to right. Option to the right. The pitch back to Brooks has room to run. 30, 35, 40 yard line. And the Cougs move the chains on a second and long, wide open field for Chris Brooks on the option to the right side. Attacking the edge in the run game, I think, I mean, it could have just been a bust by Liberty, but based on their pre-snap alignment, that looks like BYU should be able to come back to that play and be able to get another chunk or two as this game goes on. 22-yard option run by Brooks. First and 10, BYU with the 40. Under four to go until halftime. BYU trailing it 17 to 14. The shotgun snap to Jaron. Little play fake. A deeper drop. Sets and throws for Puka. Makes the catch at the 45. Going right to left across the field. And is tackled at the 40. Big gainer to Puka. And BYU in business inside Liberty side of the field. It's all Puka Nakua right now for BYU. You almost wonder, I mean, you're down, right? So you've got to take points at all costs. But with 342 on the clock, you almost wonder if you want to play a little bit of time management as to not give Liberty a chance at a two-minute uh, drill if you happen to score here. Puka is limping and hobbled to the sideline. He took himself out. 
He's on the sideline and limped to the team area. We'll keep an eye on that. First and 10, BYU. At the Liberty 40-yard line, Miles Davis in off the right hip of Hall. Again, play action. Fired to the right. Cody Epps, first catch, shakes off the first tackle, falls ahead to the 31-yard line. A gain of almost nine. Third down. Make it second down and short coming up for BYU. Second down two. That's Cody's first catch of the day. 3.05 to play till halftime. Liberty 17, BYU 14. Second down and two from the Liberty 32. Ball now near hash. The attacking right hash for Jaron Hall as he looks down the field. In shadows, the entire BYU offensive set. Hand off Miles Davis left and nothing there for Miles. Loss of one, third down and three back at the 33. Certainly it's four down territory for BYU. That was a real good close by the linebacker Ahmad Walker. I thought Davis had a seam there, but uh, he plugged it up really quick. BYU, by the way, has not attempted a field goal in the month of October. And they are thinking touchdowns at this part of the field. 33-yard line of Liberty, third down and three. BYU won 4-3 on third downs. The game clock down to 220. The play clock down to 15. Jaron Hall setting up in the gun. Lopini Katoa to his right. They'll double shift the tight ends, Rex and Wake to the right side. Motioning is Puka back in the game. Takes fly sweep. Gets past one tackler. The second gets him for a loss on the play. Back to the 39. And Puka goes off the field again. Favoring one of his lower extremities. Tough day for Puka. Or is it his arm this time? He's holding his left arm. And so Puka is out. And now on fourth down and nine, the offense stays on the field. It remains four down territory. The 39-yard line is the line of scrimmage. The line to gain is the 30. Fourth down and nine, BYU Liberty looking to take momentum and the lead into the locker room. Big play for both teams in a three-point game. 17-14, Flames lead the Cougs. 90 seconds to go till halftime. Fourth and nine, BYU at the Liberty 39. Jaron Hall takes the shotgun snap. Takes a deep, deep drop. Sets to throw. Plenty of time. He throws. Incomplete. And the Flames take over. Went for Chase Roberts. Too high and too far outside the catching frame for Roberts. And Liberty takes over on downs. 1.15 to go till halftime. If Liberty plays this right, they'll take a lead to the break and have the first possession of the second half coming out of the locker room to work with. Liberty 17, BYU 14. How big is a halftime lead for Liberty should they keep it? Under Hugh Freeze, the Flames are 27-1 and when leading at halftime, and they're leading as we approach halftime in Lynchburg. Timeout on the field. 17-14 Flames on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to BYU Football on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. One minute, 15 seconds to go until halftime here in Lynchburg, Virginia. Liberty leading BYU by a score of 17 to 14. BYU football brought to you by Big O Tires. Go to BigOtires.com and make an appointment at one of 50 locally owned and operated Utah locations. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Well, how greedy does Hugh Freeze and Liberty want to get with 75 seconds to go until halftime? They're a, they're a giveaway prone team. They've already thrown a pick that's resulted in a short field touchdown for BYU. What do they want to do with a minute and 15 seconds to go before the break? If they give one away late here in the first half, they lose all momentum, and BYU can get back in this contest or take a lead. If Liberty key, even just keeps the football to the break, they put themselves in good shape, taking the second half kickoff. Here we go, 17-14. Flames lead the Cougs, first and 10, Liberty, after BYU turns it over on downs. Jonathan Bennett has gone almost all the way. A couple of cameos from Charlie Brewer, ineffective ones at that. Bennett's in the gun. Day-Day Hunter. It's been very impressive. 12 carries, 72 yards for Day-Day on the day. In the pocket is Bennett. Now forced out to his left. He shovels it incomplete to Demario Douglas. Incomplete will stop the clock with 109, and both teams all three timeouts remaining. So the Cougar defense here is thinking a uh, quick three and out, get the ball back, and try and get some momentum back before the break. And yeah. BYU, BYU can stop it three times. Yeah, it helps there that uh, they gave you, a, you know, he kind of threw it away. That was a harmless pass attempt that saves you by stopping the clock. Saves you a timeout, I mean. Shotgun for Bennett. They vacate to go empty. Bennett sidesteps, 
A would-be tackle for loss. Throws to a complete receiver. It's Day-Day. Makes the catch. Spins out of tackles. Day-Day to the 49-yard line. A near first down gain on second down and 10. They'll move the sticks. Wow. A 10-yard gain, Riley, when he appeared to be stopped well short of the line to gain. Extremely slippery, and he's shown great heart in running the football. And so now we're at 55 seconds. Clock rolling, and they're empty again for Bennett. Bennett's got to be careful with the football. He takes off and runs, gets midfield, gets 45, gets 40-yard line, stayed in bounds. Inside the 40, it's another chain mover. Again, the only thing that hurts Liberty late is another giveaway. 44 seconds to go till halftime, and Liberty approaching scoring territory. 17-14 Flames. BYU's lost its last four games when trailing at the break. They're trailing nearing the break. Pistol, Hunter behind Bennett. They look to the sidelines with twins left and right. Ball far hash, Liberty right to left as we see it and you hear it. Flames up three in the closing seconds of the first half. The shotgun snap at the belt to Bennett. Hands off to Day-Day. And Day-Day again so finds Man. a way to stay on his feet and spin out of tackles. I mean, To the 32, it's a gain of seven. Greg, he was head up like face-to-face -face with Keenan Peely. One yard past the line of scrimmage. Timeout, Liberty University. This is their first time out of the half. And yet was able to... Second time out. He was able to somehow generate five more yards after initial contact. He's been impressive. Well, and Riley, you, you, t you mentioned earlier it doesn't look like he's... Uh you know, it is is 190 he, he, he pounds. He lives up generous. to the 190 billing. Yeah. Well, his his legs, all the power comes from his legs. He's got tree trunks of legs, at least here from from field level, and just continues to drive those. And is is that that's the reason he has so much power behind uh, behind his runs. Mitchell Jurgens in the Zions Bank end zone for big time banking with a home team feel. Zions Bank is for you. Mitch, stay with us for a moment. Uh, what's the injury situation down there on the offense? Yeah. So Chris Brooks, after that long run, he's been on the sideline with a wrap around his hamstring. Um, and, and he's been getting stretched by the trainer, so that could be something to watch. Hopefully it isn't significant um, and that he can continue to uh, produce at the running back position for the Cougs. Thank you, Mitch. 37 seconds to go till halftime. Second down on three flames at the BYU 32-yard line. Shotgun to Bennett. Play fake. Five-step drop. Pocket clean. Now it collapses. He steps up and takes off. He has the 30, the 25, and is brought down by Keenan Peely between the 25 and 20-yard line. On second and three, the sticks will move. It's first down gainer to the 22-yard line, and 28 seconds left to go until halftime. So Liberty is looking at no worse than a try for a field goal for a six-point lead at the break. BYU, by the way, this season has not won a game when trailing at halftime. All three BYU losses have been after halftime deficits. BYU down 17-14. The clock stopped at 28 seconds. Two timeouts left for the Flames, all three for BYU. Bennett Gunn. Twins left and right. Bennett steps up and fires far sideline. Catch made at the 20. And Demario Douglas is dragged down by a foot to the 21-yard line, just a gain of one. So second down, nine. And with 20 seconds to go, will Liberty call the second of three timeouts? Clock is stopped. Somebody called time. Yeah, I was going to say, Greg, why is it stop? I was going to say huge tackle by Gabe Judy Lally to time keep out. him in bounds. Liberty University. This is our second time out of the half. Got it. 30 second time out. So we'll stay right here with it. Down to 20 seconds. It'll be second down and nine from the 21. Liberty 17 and BYU 14. And again, the coin toss was won by the Flames. They deferred. So Liberty gets the second half kickoff. The chance is theirs to own the middle eight, final four of the first half and first four of the second half. The last time BYU won a game when trailing at halftime was the Virginia game last year. And now it's a team from Virginia looking to send BYU to the halftime locker room facing a deficit. BYU was down 42-38. What a wild first half last year. And then ended up winning 66-49. to but four straight losses when trailing at the break since that time. All right, second and nine from the BYU 21. Bennett shotgun. Strength is to the right. The play fake. Throws underneath. Complete to Shedro Lewis inside the 20-yard line. Outside the far side numbers. The game clock is down to 10. Another down to one. nine. Liberty will call its final timeout. Yep. So third down nine. Timeout. Liberty University. This is their third timeout of the half. Third and final timeout. 30 seconds. Well, it'll be third and seven. They gained two on the play. So third down and seven from the BYU 18-yard line. So nine seconds to go. You've got seven yards to gain. You have no timeouts remaining. Yeah, it looks like they're bringing the field goal unit out on the field. To kick it on third down. Okay. 
I mean, you don't you don't have much. Not, not much time left. Even if you get, did gain a first down, not a touchdown, not much left to do at that point. Yeah. So yeah. Or, or, well, yeah. I mean, you could, I mean, you, you could take a shot at the end zone if it's there for you, and then kick a field goal. I, I'm saying that just because I see the deep snapper. I, yeah. like, I can see number four. I can see the deep snapper on the field, and it, it does look like they're coming. Yeah. I was going to say, like, if three more yards is going to make that much more different of an attempt, but that's risky, especially knowing that Bennett, you know, has let a few fly. Well, Cougars can keep it to a one-score game, even with the field goal make, and now Liberty kind of has to make it or even lose a little bit of juice here before the break. Nick Brown from the right hash will attempt a 37-yard field goal. The swing of the leg, the side spinner is good, and the Flames add three with five seconds to go until halftime. So it's 20 to 14. The deficit for BYU grows to six, but it's now 17 straight points scored by Liberty after BYU went up 14 to three in the first quarter. A scoreless second quarter for BYU as the Cougs have been outscored 17 zip. Liberty outgaining BYU by more than 100 yards here in the first half. They've snapped 20 more plays than BYU here in the first half. And they've had nearly eight more minutes of possession than BYU in the first half. And the Flames are a perfect 4-4 four four in the red zone. BYU just won 4-1 today. Yards per play, BYU still has the edge there. 7.8 to 6.6, .6, but the Cougs have snapped only 23 plays on offense. Another one of those games where the defense has a hard time getting off the field. That's a 37-yard field goal, capping a 43-yard eight-play drive. So the drives for Liberty scoring it have been 11, 11, 13, and eight plays. The only non-scoring drive was when they went two plays and threw a pick. Yeah, and in comparison, BYU's longest drive of the day is seven. Seven for 36 yards, which was their last drive that where they turned it, they missed the fourth down, turned it over on downs. Kickoff from Jason Stricker. Hobbs Nyberg is back. They'd be wise to squib it and put it in play to allow clock time to come off the clock, and they will squib it and put it in play. It hops to Caleb Christensen with four and with three. He runs it with two and with one, and the clock runs out. That'll do it for the first quarter of play. So halftime score is Liberty 20 and BYU 14. We've reached the end of the first half. Liberty fans pretty pleased. Their team after going down 14-3 to three, storms back and scores 17 in a row. Liberty takes a lead to the halftime locker room. And they'll get the ball to begin half number two. So strong start for the Cougs. Uh, big finish for Liberty. As we get ready to head down to Mitchell Jurgens, awaiting the arrival of Kalani Sitake on their way to the BYU team area. Let's go down to Mitch. Coach, uh, you started hot, scoring 14 points in the first quarter. Uh, but since then, it's been nothing on offense while also giving up 17 points defensively. Uh, how do you reverse that momentum in the second half? Yeah, we got to get off the field. Um, obviously, they're slowing the game down a little bit and getting trying to get the right calls. So we got to make some adjustments at halftime and come up with some different schemes so that make it a little bit difficult on them. Uh, and, off, you know, offensively, just stick with it. I mean, the guys, we just... We just have to be careful when we go on fourth down. If it's got fourth and nine, it's probably too much. We put the defense in a bad spot, having a shorter field than normal. Yeah, you trail six points. Where do you want to see the most improvement from, from your team in the second yeah, half? Defensively, let's get off the field. Let's get cost some turnovers, some big plays. We had some opportunities to get some sacks, didn't follow through on it. And then on, 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 uh, on offense, to sustain drives, get first downs, and get some points on the board. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Rich. All right, thank you, Mitch and Kalani. We'll come back with post -game, or rather with halftime coverage after this. Liberty 20 and BYU 14 are scored at the break in Lynchburg on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.